Welcome to another edition of CHB Talks. We are talking today about freedom of speech, especially as it relates to the right to life. And our guest today is Jim Enos. So Rod, why don't you introduce him to our audience? Well, it's a great privilege to have our good friend Jim Enos on with us tonight. Uh, Jim is the president of the Ontario Council of the Christian Heritage Party, also the CEO of the Hamilton Mountain uh, Electoral District Association of the CHP, and he's the head of the Hamilton Wentworth Family Action Council. Uh, Jim is no stranger to the world of governance as he has spent the past 25 years participating at public tables and influencing public policy. Uh, most recently, Jim as CEO for CHP Hamilton Mountain represented CHP Canada in a judicial review regarding political free speech in Canada in which three judges unanimously ruled strongly in favor of CHP Canada's right to political free speech. Jim, like CHP Canada, like CHP Canada, believes that Canadians must be free to believe or not believe and to have the freedom to peacefully express those beliefs publicly and without fear of prosecution. If Canadians do not have the freedom to speak publicly about their public policy, we will be subject to tyrannical regimes and this is something worth fighting for. Our good friend, Jim, lives with his wife, Penny, in Ancaster, Ontario. And uh, Jim, it's a real privilege to have you with us uh, today, and thank you for joining us. Well, I'm very glad to be here and to have the opportunity to talk on something probably the highest on the list of rights uh, alongside the right to life. Because even with the right to life, if we don't have the right to freedom of speech, we can't even defend our right to life. So that's not to demean the value of life, but if we can't speak about it, we're in real trouble. Well, absolutely. We've run on a platform of life, family, and freedom, and they are three pillars. Uh, life is the first and most basic of all human rights. <clears throat> family is the building block of society. And freedom of speech, without that freedom, we can't defend the other two pillars. So. Uh, we really appreciate the fight you've been leading uh, in uh, many different fronts in Ontario, and we look forward to this discussion tonight. Well, where did we, so basically tonight we want to talk about the uh, Guelph um, situation, and uh, there's a fair bit of background to that. And Jim, how did you um, want to get involved in a case that we'll be explaining? And uh, can you give us some background for starters? Yeah, how did we ever get involved in this freedom of speech uh, court scenes? You know, isn't that something? And it really, it started back in 2016 when our Electoral District Association uh, in Hamilton, they were, they were considering, they were looking at policy which would allow men who felt they were women, uh, who, 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 who had those maybe even sincere feelings, but uh, they, were, they, they were lobbying for the right to go into women's uh, change rooms, washrooms, change in the shower, public facilities. And uh, we were not impressed at all. And so we put together a flyer and uh, which ended up on a bus shelter ads. And it was, everybody knows it as the competing human rights uh, campaign. There it is, competing human rights where is the justice? So we had those ads put up on three bus shelters and they're up for all of about two days or three days. And the city of Hamilton uh, had them removed despite the contract they'd enter into with, with us. They removed those ads. And uh, then our lawyer, Albertus Polizagopoulos, he uh, contacted us and said, look, this is very important. Uh, they can't do that. And so we challenged the city and we ended up in court over the whole thing in a judicial review. And uh, the ultimate, in the end, uh, there was a unanimous uh, verdict from the three judges. Three judges uh, sat in on it and they unanimously ruled against the city of Hamilton. I really like to say, just one, read one little piece that they said at the time. I know it's, a, I know it's not what we're talking about tonight specifically, but you've asked me, how did we get here? And, and this is why it's important. Here's what they said during their, their ruling in 2018. They said that the right, the right to free speech has been recognized as a fundamental ingredient to proper functioning of democracy for hundreds of years. 
As a consequence, it has been protected by constitutions, laws, and courts across democratic jurisdictions. Conversely, a lack of free speech is a common attribute of dictatorships and tyrannical regimes. Mm -hmm. So this came out of Ontario Superior Court and uh, a very strong ruling and setting a very strong precedent. And so we've always hoped that this would uh, go to speak to other cases. Uh, we weren't out looking for a fight. We weren't out uh, hoping for, you know, to come across somebody who needed us necessarily. But lo and behold, uh, just before Christmas of this year, we were contacted by our lawyer, Alberta's Polizagopoulos. And he let us know that uh, wealth and area right to life is is under the same sort of predicament that we were in. And uh, he wanted to know, would CHP be willing to uh, hire him and to go in and, and apply for intervener status and speak for freedom of speech based on our very strong ruling, our precedent here in Hamilton. So the Guelph White to Life, they had three ads uh, that they were going to place, uh, I believe, on the sides of buses. Mm -hmm. I'll just put them up, uh, Jim. Yeah, let's have a look at those. For those who are able to view this. Yeah. So, so we can see the first ad uh, is says life should be the most fundamental human right. Say no to abortion. The second ad said human rights should not depend on where you are say no to abortion. And the third ad says, what about her choice? Say no to abortion. Right. So, so what did they find so offensive about these three ads? Well, I guess, I guess, I don't know if they actually were actually put up and taken down or whether they never got up, but somehow they, they appeared before the Ad Standard Council of Canada and the Ad Standard Council uh, gave their opinion. So their opinion on the first one, uh, by the way, they gave their opinion and then the, the city of Guelph decided to go with their opinion and take it as, as also as their opinion. So here's the objection to the first one. We see it says life should be the fund most fundamental human right. And the ads council in their, in their uh, submission has said they hold the opinion that it's inaccurate to say that life should be the most funda fundamental human right when an unborn child is not human. Wow. What is it then if it's not human, right? Well, I, doesn't, I don't think it's a puppy. Yeah, no. It's got human DNA. Yeah. So that's their first objection. That the, I guess they're trying to say the ad's misleading because that, that child is not actually human. Uh, the, so let's look at the second ad. It said human rights should not depend on where you are. And uh, here they say that uh, the, the women in this late stage of pregnancy, so they're showing a woman in a late stage of pregnancy, routinely have and exercise the choice of aborting the fetus they carry. But the statistics show that this is rare. In other words, you know, these types of abortions at this late term are rare. Well, they didn't say non-existent, did they? Well, they also don't know if it's a late stage pregnancy or an early stage pregnancy with twins. Right. Yeah, well, they they, here's their opinion though. They said yeah. that in their opinion, the ad demeaned women by conveying that women chose abortion at a time so close to the time of their delivery. Well, they do. Yeah. Well, and how would it be demeaning if it's their right? Yeah. Like from their perspective. Well, I, you, you know, this is about, I'll talk to you about that a little bit later, but everything we're doing, society, society is trying to do, we're trying to remove stigma from everything that's wrong. Yeah. You, well, and stigma, and you don't, yeah, go yeah. ahead, Ron. Other than the picture, it doesn't, there's no indication what stage of, uh, of pregnancy that is. And, and to us, it doesn't really matter if it's five, five months, six months, three months. I mean, uh, there's still a human being in there that, uh, 
that like right. just says human rights shouldn't depend on where you are, whether you're in the womb or out of the womb, right? So uh, it's funny that the ads council would weigh in as if it would make a difference what what age you were in the womb, right? Right. Yes. Yeah, I think they're. they're I mean, their their arguments are are horrible. Yeah. And here's the third. The third ad says, "What about her choice?" And here they say. The, it, the ad falsely implied that a fetus has the capacity of choice and that the use of the word her falsely gives the impression of personhood. Wow. Uh, so this is, it's false to say that is a person. Wow. So it's not a human, it's not a person, and uh, it's, it's, it's nothing to feel bad about. You shouldn't feel bad about discarding the lives. It's really what their three arguments are. And so really it's, it's like, it's a freedom of speech, sort of like ours, but it's a little bit different because not only are they arguing about freedom of speech, they're also bringing into the whole argument life itself. Mm -hmm. And now I think a judge is going to, I mean, Albertus isn't here, but I could see that a judge isn't going to just weigh in on opinion, but on whether people have a right to express the opinion. But is this a life or isn't it a life? Is the ad misleading or is it not misleading? Right. So if, he, if, they, rule, if they rule that it's not misleading, they're, they're ruling that, you know, mm. like it, it could be a very big case. And so, who would want get, who wouldn't want to take advantage and get involved in such a powerful a case, which has such a powerful uh, uh, possible impact on the on the pro life argument? Well, I know I was really pleased that Alberto's uh, approached us with this question. Uh, <clears throat> we certainly have a high regard for him in his capacity as a lawyer. He does a great job, and. Uh, but not only that, just it, it's an honor to be in the front lines of this battle. And so we are pleased if, uh, if circumstances allow that we are, would be able to uh, send him in for us to argue the merits of uh, free speech for the Guelph and Area Right to Life Association. And ultimately for the unborn. Right. Oh, um, and that's where that's Jim, as you said, that's where the, the case is is more than freedom of speech. But even if you were, you know, not pro-life, just the freedom of speech angle should be enough to make you say, you know, they're, they're way off. Right. Um, turning down an ad like this. I saw a young man had a, a sign the other day uh, at a freedom rally, and it it basically said in. In democratic countries, we say, believe it or not. And in d dictatorships, they say, believe it or else. So I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, and that's where we're, that's where we're heading so quickly in society today. I mean, nobody likes, to, nobody likes to have to spend money in order just to keep the right to keep our mouths, you know, moving and to continue to speak out against uh, tyranny and as, as the courts have already said tyranny and dictatorships is what this is all about. But Guelph is really acting as a dictator here, telling telling uh, you know what message people can hear and what they can't hear. We won't let them hear about this message. I mean, the ads council has given their opinion. It says it's their opinion. Why can't we express our opinion? Why can't Guelph express their opinion? Let people decide for themselves. That's what democracy is about. Absolutely. And when that baby is born, she can express her opinion, right? Yeah. She can say, thank you, mom. Yeah. That's right. So looking forward now, um, or even maybe looking at where things are at, at the present moment, um, what's happening? CHP is seeking intervener status. What does that mean? And uh, what does it, uh, what's the prospects looking forward? So there's a couple of things that has to happen. Uh, one aspect of it is that uh, we have a budget of about $30,000 that we're seeking to meet. Um, and the pledges, so we began to take pledges. We have not, we're not taking any money at this time, only pledges. And then when the target is met, and we believe it will be met, when the target is met, then we'll ask for those pledges to be fulfilled. So we're very honest about this. We're not going to take people's money and then Oh, you know, we didn't have enough. 
and keep the money. We're not doing that. We're, we're ensuring that the pledges are in place. Uh, when that when our targets are met, then uh, Albertos will have a freedom to move ahead and he will apply to the courts for uh, intervener status. So I guess it's not a it's not an automatic, it's not a guaranteed uh, outcome. But uh, so far, the courts have approved, as I understand, they've approved the Abortion Rights League or, of Canada. It's a non, non-profit pro, pro-abortion. They call them pro-choice, but we know what that means. They're, it's a pro-death organization. And they're approved as intervener status. It's hard to imagine that the courts would turn down someone to intervene from the other side. If they did, I, the case would, I would think, would be immediately appealed. So I, I can't imagine that happening. It, it's kind of funny that a group that wants to be known as pro-choice would be intervening in a case to pre, uh, prevent someone else from being able to even speak on something, uh, to have a choice to open their yeah. mouth or not. But uh, that's where we're yeah. at in our society. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they have intervener status, so they're going to be in their bat, going to bat for the city. And so we're going to go in and we're going to go into bat for Guelph Right to Life. Absolutely. Yeah. So basically, we have a chance to speak in a judicial um, in a court of law and um, present CHP's experience and CHP's perspective on the case overall. Is that the uh, the goal here? Well, it wouldn't be just speaking on the case, you know, having no background. It would be bringing our our ruling with him. Yes. And, and repeating what's already been said and recently in 2018. So that's not so long ago. Right. Right. And uh, it's very relevant, and it's and it talks about cities versus groups, so it's really similar, and so it's a very strong precedent, a unanimous ruling with very strong language, and so it would be a shame for us not to raise the correct amount of money, and not proceed, uh, when we have such a strong case, uh, just waiting uh, waiting on the in the wings to to come in and speak loudly. So we're really hoping to hit those uh, targets over the next week or so. Yep, <clears throat> and the response has been good so far. And so we've got to keep that momentum. And uh, it's a great um, opportunity to be involved on the side of freedom of speech and on the side of uh, pro-life. So um, anything else that we want to say uh, in terms of action, in terms of the ways that people can help or um, take part in any way? Well, I guess we're going to want to spell out how they can how they can make a pledge. Um, I'll leave that up to you or Rod. Sure. Well, you can go ahead, Peter. Well, of course, uh, just by um, email, uh, info at chb.ca is probably going to be the uh, easiest way to get your name and information in, so that we can follow up with the the pledge. Um, So if you haven't done so already, please uh, consider doing that. Um, Info at chp.ca is going to be the email address. And um, then we can get all the information. There would be a, as long as you type it out right, we won't have any mistakes. So um, that will be the the best way to get started with that. Um, And you can always um, phone the office as well. Um, if you want to uh, phone and just get some instructions that way. Um, and so uh, of you, course, there's the email, website, chp.ca. If you email, be sure to give your name, uh, yeah. your phone number and so on, so that uh, George Zachveld from the office or Peter, or one of us can get back to you and confirm. And we will be uh, phoning folks fairly soon, I believe, and beginning to ask for those pledges to be fulfilled. I know I've was uh, able to make a pledge the other day and happy to be a part of of this uh, movement to defend free speech and defend the right to life in Guelph. And so uh, anyway, we hope many others will will join us in that uh, in that battle and and we expect victory. I mean, we we certainly look for victory and <clears throat> and the right to life and the right to free speech deserves victory. We know Albertos will do a good job uh, representing uh, that point of view. And we hope that the judges will will see it in the same way. If any. Yes. Yeah, so now this just so people understand too, this case is going into the courts in June, so it's not that far away. 
Okay. Uh, this is already predetermined, and Albertus is just chomping at the bit, waiting to get going here. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't. I guess he'll probably be coming in, interviewing uh, the city of Guelph and so on, and doing taking affidavits. I remember sitting in cross examination for the city of Hamilton. It was just. I sat there for four days and listened to them spill out their their s s profound foolishness. And uh, I really love to, I'm hoping I'll be able to go with CHP Canada because we're footing the bill. I'd love to go in and sit in the cross examinations of the witnesses and listen to them defend that that's not a human. Like, I just want to see, I just want to see them stumble their way through that. It's going to mm -hmm. be a beauty. Mm -hmm. And this is, by the way, the same lawyer that won the case um, for CHP Hamilton. And right. so he was the lawyer, thankfully, behind that precedent, and he's the one taking it forward to the next court. So it's got to be rewarding for him to see the opportunity and uh, for all of us to be part of it. So um, any closing thoughts before we sign off here? Well, I'm just... Well, like yeah. Go ahead, Rod. I, I, Jim, I'd like to thank you for your leadership in this and uh, presenting the case uh, to the National Board and and uh, maintaining the communication with Albertos. And we certainly uh, hope that we have the opportunity to send him in to battle for us uh, shortly here. Yeah, and I just want to say something that I put in writing just a couple of days ago. Some people will say that CHP Canada will not be the, the ruling party in the next election. Well, you're probably right about that. But you know, there's no other political party that's willing to come to the front like CHP has been. We came to the front when it came to defending women's right to privacy, you know, in, in intimate facilities. We were there in the courts and we, and we brought a victory in that. We brought a victory for freedom of speech. And here we are again. So, you know, you don't have to be in power in order to influence governance. And that's what we're doing. And, and CHP, I'm so glad to be part of it. I'm just blessed to be part of CHP and at the front lines. It's exciting. And I will hope you all join us by, by sponsoring and by keeping your uh, ear to the ground to hear what's going on. Thank you. And, uh, and I'll just encourage all of us to also uh, pray to God who is the great intervener in all of human affairs that uh, this would be another victory um, for freedom of speech, for the right for upholding human life as created in him as his image. And uh, so please pray with us for that as well. Join us in uh, making a pledge for this court case. And uh, God bless all of you. Hope to see you for another edition of CHP Talks. Thank you all. Good night.